Thank you, Martha. Today, fallout from Benghazi. New released emails revealing how Clinton's team tried to manage a showdown on Capitol Hill. And the dozens of lawsuits now underway that could expose thousands of more documents ahead of the election. Plus, new polling, including a national survey that shows Donald Trump in the lead and how both sides are focusing hard on those swing battleground states, which might include, according to one survey, Texas. Also, the story of a murder suspect who broke his handcuffs, escaped from a locked room, and then stole a pickup truck to make his getaway. He is still on the run now. It's all ahead in the next hour, right here. I'm Bill Hemmer in today for Shepard Smith. Newly released emails show that Hillary Clinton's team apparently helped stage part of her first congressional testimony in Benghazi. The emails come from the conservative group Citizens United, and Fox News was the first to report on them. The exchanges show back in January of 2013, a top State Department official, an advisor to Secretary Clinton, claimed that he fed two topics to the ranking Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Bob Menendez. And when Clinton appeared before that committee, the first question Senator Menendez asked her covered both topics. The secretary's whereabouts during the attack in Benghazi and her decision making when it came to the location of the U.S. outpost there. Of course, this is just the latest document released tied to Clinton's emails. And the Wall Street Journal now reports thousands more pages of Clinton documents are already set for release. This is federal courts weigh dozens of lawsuits, mostly from conservative groups and Republican operatives. Last week, an FBI summary showed Clinton told agents she believed a C label document as confidential was somehow related to alphabetical order. That report also showing an aide to Secretary Clinton claimed he destroyed some of her mobile devices by smashing them with a hammer. Analysts say the email scandal may be dragging down Hillary Clinton's campaign and recent polling numbers show that race tightening as of today. A new CNN survey out today shows 50 percent of voters claim Donald Trump is honest and trustworthy compared to just 35 percent for Clinton. We will have much more in a moment here on that poll and others. But first, back to Hillary Clinton now on the stump in Tampa, Florida. You all know the story. Some of you read the book. Some of you have seen the movies. But there's one thing I want to tell you because it demonstrates, again, what our values are as Americans. Remember, Donald Trump has said he would order American troops to torture. He would order American troops to murder family members of terrorists. That's what he has said. Heedless of the consequences that that would lead to in terms of putting Americans all over the world at even greater risk. But here's what happened that night in Pakistan. And this is not an often told part of the story. That's why I want to tell you, particularly the young people here, particularly active duty and military veterans like Mary. If you saw any of the reenactment, you know that one of the helicopters clipped its tail as it was going in to the courtyard on the wall. It disabled that helicopter. Now, thankfully, every contingency had been thought through. And so we were prepared for that. The military was prepared. They could get another helicopter there to take out the SEALs who were going to have to blow up the disabled helicopter. After rushing into the compound, taking out the two bodyguards, taking out bin Laden's adult son, taking out bin Laden, they knew they had to get out of there. At any time, there could have been Pakistani military wondering, what's going on? Something's happening. And this was a military garrison town. So time was really precious. But here's what the SEALs did. Before they blew that, el that helicopter up, they took out all the women and children, family members, of terrorists, including the worst terrorist of all. They took them out of the compound, around the back, to safety, before they blew that helicopter up. That, Donald Trump, is what American honor looks like. I want to mention just three other threats. 
One threat here right at home, the epidemic of gun violence. And we have got to have comprehensive background checks. Close the gun show loophole. Close the online loophole. And and the ability of people on the terrorist watch list buying a gun in America. This agenda I've just briefly outlined is supported by a vast majority of Americans and a vast majority of American gun owners. And it's time we all said in one voice, hey, we can respect the Second Amendment, we can respect the right to own arms, but we don't want people who shouldn't have guns in the first place killing anybody else ever again. Another threat to our country is climate change. 2015 was the hottest year on record and the science is clear. It's real, it's wreaking havoc on communities across America. Last week's hurricane was another reminder of the devastation that extreme weather can cause, and I send my thoughts and prayers to everyone affected by Hermine. But this is not the last one that's gonna hit Florida, given what's happening in the climate. Nobody knows that better than folks right here in Tampa and in the broader region. So Hillary Clinton relaying a story about the bin Laden raid, about uh, what Navy SEALs did that night in Pakistan, also talking about the threat of ISIS there. Uh, we were discussing some of these emails that have now been uh, made public that go right to the stage management that was conducted during her testimony uh, before Congress. Want to get a chief intelligence correspondent, Catherine Heveridge, right now. Uh, she is live in the story in Washington. Catherine, you were the first to report it. What can we say about what sort of management was in store? Well, Bill, these emails were first obtained by the group Citizens United, who is seeking records from the State Department, including emails from Chelsea Clinton, as well as Hillary Clinton's closest aides. In this exchange from January 2013, Clinton's media gatekeeper, Philippe Rhinus, writes to Chelsea with an update on the Benghazi hearing before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Chelsea uses the pseudonym Diane Reynolds on ClintonEmail.com, and it reads in part, we wired it that Menendez would provide an opportunity to address two topics we needed to debunk, her actions whereabouts on 9-11 and these email from Chris Stevens about moving locations. That is a reference to Ambassador Chris Stevens, who was one of four Americans killed in the 2012 terrorist attack, along with Foreign Service Officer Sean Smith and former Navy SEALs Ty Woods and Glenn Doherty, who died defending the CIA base. The first question at the hearing from Senator Menendez covered both topics. Can you uh, give us uh, your insights on the decision-making process uh, regarding the location of the mission? And as part of that, can you also, in your response, you touched upon it uh, in your opening statement, but what actions were you and your staff uh, taking the night of September 11th and into September the 12th? Well, first, um, you're right, Mr. Chairman, that there was an ongoing uh, discussion. Also today, the chairman of the House Government Oversight Committee has written to the U.S. attorney here in Washington, asking him to investigate whether Clinton and her team obstructed justice by deleting thousands of emails that were subject to a court preservation order. And within the last hour, Clinton has responded to reporters about that question and says she has no reservations that her aides did anything wrong. Huh. Have you reached out to the Clinton team? Have you gotten a response to all this? Well, conflict? I have. Uh, first, we heard from Citizens United, who released this statement. It reads in part, this email changed provides a rare behind-the-scenes look at which Benghazi-related issues the Clinton camp had concerns about going into Secretary Clinton's January 2013 testimony on Capitol Hill and what they had apparently plotted out beforehand with a Democrat committee member. We asked the Clinton campaign and the senator's office this morning if there was coordination between the two groups in advance of the hearing, what was meant by this term wired, and how these emails are consistent with the independent oversight role of Congress. The senator's, hour, uh, the senator's office, pardon me, last hour said they would not comment. The Clinton campaign confirmed that they have our questions and they may get back to us later today. Bill. We are on standby. Mm -hmm. Catherine Harris, thank you. In Washington, we're going to bring in Glenn Hall now, U.S. editor of the Wall Street Journal for more on this. And Glenn, good afternoon to you. Part of the challenge for the Clinton team now is getting beyond this. It won't go but away. It appears the drip, drip, drip will always be with them. What do you have? Well, that's exactly right. It's going to stay because they can't control the timeline. And these are coming through various lawsuits from Judicial Watch, Citizens United, but also
also the State Department has to vet and reveal. So there's no way for the Clinton team to control when the message comes out. They'd love to put this behind them, but it's going to keep coming a new bit, batch of emails, another new batch of emails, each time reminding us of some of these issues that are causing those trustworthiness uh, numbers in the polls to come down. Do you think that's what the, uh, the wear and tear is about in the polls? I, that we're I think it today? wears and tears over time. Exactly right, Bill. And, you know, we've seen her numbers coming down. We've started to see Donald Trump's numbers uh, creeping up, and that gap is narrowed down in the real, call, uh, real clear politics average of 3.5, 3.9% now is all there is left in the gap. Let me show you what the FBI found. Some of the key findings right now on screen. Clinton could not recall training on handling classified documents, did not understand the C markings meant confidential. That's what she said. Did not realize drone strike discussions were classified and used 13 separate mobile devices to destroy it, as I mentioned a few moments ago, with a hammer. Put that together. All of that from those FBI documents, right, where they decided not to pursue, but decided that it was also very careless. And you look in that and you see voters and political pollsters telling us that the impact is not just on the trustworthiness side, but on this question of is she ready for this office? Does she have what it takes? Does she have the technological know-how, which many younger voters expect a leader to have? Did she understand the issues? Did she know what she was doing? And some of those answers give, give way to a little bit of skepticism. Uh, and you also report that the tenor of her campaign will start changing as a result. How? Yeah, we've been hearing that from inside the Clinton campaign. We saw a little bit of it recently where she's going back and actually talked to reporters on her, on her flight uh, recently. So you're starting to see her engage more. She needs to try to take back control of the narrative. For a while, she was sitting back and letting Donald Trump do his thing. He steals a lot of the air out of the room, and he's capable of doing himself harm as well as good. They thought they would just let that play out. Now they realize that I think she's going to need to engage more and try to take control of the narrative because she can't control these emails. We're talk to Jennifer Griffin in a moment about that, too. Two more final points with yeah. you. Um, how much of this could be white noise? where voters say, you know, I've heard it before and I've made up my mind. There's a lot in these emails that isn't new, for sure. It just repeats and reminds us of the issues that came out. It reminds uh, voters of the, you know, the way that the Clintons have tried to manipulate and control outcomes. You know, you saw that with the Menendez discussion you just had. So the sense of her being a political insider in a year when people are against political insiders can do That's harm. That's an interesting point because Jerry Seib, your colleague, writes today, the most highly qualified presidential candidate in years or a slippery and secretive insider in a year when people are seeking authenticity and truth-telling above all else. Last yeah, so Jerry has a great analysis there saying which of these two Clintons are the voters buying into, and we're starting to see in the polls that there's a question. Glenn, good to see you. Glenn Hall from the Wall Street Journal, thank you. So.